Okay, let me start by saying this video is not about AI. I know OpenAI just launched Sora, which is a text-to-video AI model and it looks fantastic and it might disrupt content creation and probably kill the industry. But that is not why I think the future of YouTube is looking bleak. You see, in the last month or so, I have been trying a few different things with a few of my videos. As you all might have noticed, views have dropped quite significantly over the last few months, quite possibly due to the time of the year, or maybe people are just not on YouTube as often as they used to be. So I wanted to see if there is a way I can bump up my views and bring my channel back to its glory days. Now to do this, I have identified two things I can try to change up, which are the thumbnail designs and the title. However, it is during this time when I accidentally discovered something that I probably already know in some way, but I refuse to accept. To better explain this, I will first show you the changes I made, what are the effects, and how that changed up my channel. Then I will show you why this is bad news. So let's start with the change in thumbnail design. Last year, my video thumbnails have been rather gimmicky. They are often colorful and they look very generic, like any other thumbnails you see on YouTube. I mean, if I scroll through this list here of the videos I created last year, you can probably tell there are a lot of similarities with a lot of YouTube videos out there. The contrast is high, the expression is the usual surprise face, Almost every YouTube has the same elements, the arrows, and also the words used are to create curiosity and make it clickbaity. Basically, nothing you have not seen before and that is the issue here. This is probably more of a psychological thing. Our brain can easily grow accustomed to certain things when we see it too often. I am sure you are already aware that Mr. Beast thumbnails work wonders and before you know it, everyone is copying his thumbnail in some way. And when I see thumbnails like that, I immediately think the video is going to be like Mr. Beast. Over the top, lots of shouting and overhyped and overly excited, and it always has something to do with challenges. And soon after that, our brain gets used to those thumbnails and our tolerance for them increases, which makes us less likely to click them. Mr. Beast still gets clicks though. I think at his level, it has not much to do with the thumbnails anymore, but more to do with his brand and popularity. So anyways, thanks to the whole psychology around thumbnails, I decided to revamp my thumbnails, change it up a little, but not so much till it becomes unrecognizable. I decided to go with the minimalist style. I ditched the whole shocking face because it is way overused and I decided to do a selfie instead of posing for photos. And I keep the time spent on thumbnails to a minimum. Usually I would go around researching other thumbnails and I would spend 30 minutes to an hour trying to perfect the thumbnail. Well, I threw those out to the drain and went by instinct. I just go with whatever comes to my mind. Usually it will be someone else's thumbnail I saw in the past by coincidence that had a lasting impact on me. But I did not look up the thumbnail I saw in the past. I just went with whatever made sense to me and I don't want to overthink. Then this happened. Those videos I launched had a click-through rate between 6.5% to almost 10% in the first 24 hours. And that's pretty impressive considering I tend to get around 5%. But not only that, the videos I launched had above average views too. The ones I launched in November and December had less than 3,000 views so far. But my recent ones hit above 4,000 views. Except for this one, which is struggling a little, but more on that later. Now to me, I thought that was fantastic. Not only do I spend less time on my thumbnail, but I also managed to improve my CTR. I think that's a win. It goes to show how sometimes the more we work on our thumbnail, the worse it gets. But of course, a thumbnail is just a small portion of the equation. A video's clickability is also associated with the way we title the video, which is the next thing I want to talk about. Last year, the titles of my videos have always been around me. For example, I made extra revenue on YouTube with buy me a coffee or how to automate a YouTube channel and grow fast. These are the type of titles where it makes me sound like I am superior to my viewers. It is as though I found something, some sort of secret. This type of titles is used multiple times by many channels and I feel like there's something annoying about those titles. On one hand, it creates curiosity. It is like saying, hey, I made a million dollars on this unknown side hustle. Do you want to know what it is? 
I'll share it with you. It creates high expectations in the viewer, but if the delivery is bad, the viewer can feel disappointed. But what's worse to me is after being exposed to these titles a lot, it starts to make me feel like the channel is showing off. It strikes me as a little arrogant, especially if the same channel is doing it over and over again. So I didn't want to be that person. I don't want to portray myself as an expert. And I changed my title to make it a little more direct and more about me sharing my opinion. These are the titles I came up with in the end. It still can be seen as a little clickbaity, I guess, but I switched it around so that it is no longer a secret or an unknown thing I discovered. I title it so that what I have in the title is exactly what I am saying in my video. I first tell you what it is, then I do the long-winded explanation. Some of you may disagree and still see it as not much of a difference, and that's okay. But at least my content does not promise you that you will discover something so bizarre and you will only discover it at the end of the video, right? But anyways, enough of me explaining. Let me jump right into the views I got. Over 4,000 views in these videos and it is above my typical average for sure. So I think this sort of explains my viewers are quite frankly sick and tired of hidden secrets to discover and just wants me to tell it as it is. But hang on, why is this video here not performing above my average? I think apart from the title, the topic plays a much more important role in it all. The topic of money is hit and miss. Some people like it, but most people don't due to the pain associated with money. So I would say this topic isn't something my viewers enjoy, but to me, it is an important topic to touch on and to raise awareness, and that is why I did the video anyway. Now, you may have noticed another video here that got over 10,000 views. So let me explain why I think that is the case. The title here is, to put it bluntly, a combination of two elements. It stands out because it is not something you see often, and it is gossip. I think humans just enjoy good gossip, don't you think? It is what the whole entertainment media builds on and it's just fun, you know? So if you ask me, the reason this video does well is because it is gossip. I just had it titled this way because I want people who watch this video to learn that copying is really one of the best ways to grow your channel. All right, so that was what I tested in my last five videos. Great test. Here's the bad news. I discovered that YouTube gives my channel a boost only if I upload a new video. And I'm not talking about small boosts, I'm talking about a big boost, enough to help me gain hundreds of new subscribers. Just take a look at this chart here. Every single time I launch a new video, my views spike up and then it slowly dies off into oblivion, waiting for me to launch my next video. And the jump in views is pretty significant as well. Thousands of extra views, so it's not like it is nothing. But you might be thinking that this is natural. When you launch a new video, your returning viewers boost up the views, right? Well, not exactly. If I check my subscriber count chart, you can see here the chart is more or less the same as my view count chart, indicating that I get new subscribers when I launch a new video. So what I can conclude here is YouTube wants us to always be creating content if we want our channel to grow. It almost feels as though we can't take a break. But why is YouTube's future looking bleak? Well, if my channel only grows if I upload a new video, then the algorithm is slowly changing and it is starting to look more like Instagram and TikTok. We all know that to grow on Instagram and TikTok, we really have to be pushing content out on a daily basis, preferably a few times a day. That's how those platforms work. But those platforms are built to do that, to upload simple videos that we can take with our phones with not much planning. YouTube is a different platform. It requires planning, the audience is different, unless YouTube is also tweaking those rules in favor of YouTube Shorts. This is just a theory, but I can't help but feel this is coming and it is not looking good for YouTubers. If YouTube is only pushing my channel when I upload new videos, then that is exactly what YouTube Shorts is for. If you have been creating long-form content on YouTube for a while now, then you will know why YouTube Shorts can be bad news. 
the monetization is horrible, the target audience is wrong, and it doesn't make YouTube unique anymore. I'm not going to explain why YouTube trying to win the vertical video format is bad for us. There are plenty of channels out there that already covered that, so go check them out. The one that is really informative is a video done by Game Theorists. I will put a link down in the description, so be sure to check it out. As for what it really means for me, I don't know. Maybe I should launch YouTube Shorts on a daily basis to see if that is the case. But at the same time, I'm afraid it might bring in the wrong audience. Whatever it is, YouTube just isn't clear about this and I sincerely hope I am wrong. What I do know is YouTube Shorts is getting significantly more views than long form and it is big money for YouTube. Except it isn't for content creators who are serious about YouTube. 